what do you think is the actual difference between angels and humans? Because humans are described as being made in the image and likeness of God. So how does that distinguish our being from an angel? Mm -hmm. All right. I think we need the untwisted sister to teach us on this one. Well, I, I'm not sure what they mean. How, how, does it, how does it differ? Okay, one, let me pull up a verse here. There's a verse I know, but I don't know where it is. Uh, here we go. Okay, so there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, raised in glory. Uh, and then it says there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So angels have spiritual bodies. We have natural terrestrial bodies. That is the core difference. Now, uh, angels were created perfect. If you read uh, where it says thou wast first created, perfect when thou wast created. I will find it. Uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28, if you want to go there. So, Adam and Eve were created innocent when they were created. Angels are created. Perfect. And let's see. Yes, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. This is talking about Satan before he fell. Till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. We see that angels, a lot of people use the word angel for all the spiritual entities, and that is incorrect. Angel is only for messengers. So when God sends a spiritual entity uh, to give humans a message, they are an angel. But there are cherubim, they are, those are the ones that surround God's throne. You hear where it talks about the stones of fire. That's the altar of God in heaven. You, you have the seraphim, which are like serpentine, uh, fiery serpent, uh, angelic creatures, but they're not really, they're kind of angels. They're called watchers. They're mentioned in the book of Daniel. So they are created perfect, right? They are in the absolute presence of God. And a third of them fell uh, with Satan. Uh, so they have a body different than ours, but there is no redemption for them. Uh, Satan literally set it up to trick and deceive man and take away his dominion so that he would fall and death would come into the world. He hated man. The angels, they had been in the presence of God. They are without excuse. It says here that iniquity was found in him because of his pride. He was lifted up. He's a created being and he should have been glorifying God for all the gifts he had. You know, all it names all the gifts uh, Satan had before he fell. He should have been glorifying God. Wow, thank you for making me this way, right? No, he he, he worshiped himself. So uh, the, the one thing I see the difference between humans and angels is in the Old Testament, they're called sons of God, right? In the New Testament, we're told the angels are fascinated that he has redeemed man and is going to give us a glorified body and have adopted us as sons of God. So we've been adopted into that family and they have celestial bodies. They are not disembodied spirits just floating around. They have bodies. 
They are just spiritual bodies like Jesus. You remember the two angels that came and sat down and ate with Abraham? Um, who God was with them. It's a Christophany. It's a foreshadow of Jesus appearing with Abraham, sitting down and eating with him because God came with two angels. Um, so they look just like men. They look so much like men and they're so beautiful that the guys in Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to rape them, if you remember correctly, when they were sent to get Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah before it was destroyed. So uh, the difference I see is that one, they have a different body, a celestial body. Two, they cannot be redeemed because they are without excuse. They were in the presence of God. They saw God uh, and we were separated from God. We, we've never seen him. Uh, we were actually, uh, tempted, uh, by an enemy of God to destroy us. God already saw it. He didn't trip anybody up. God had a plan because Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So God knew Satan was going to do all this before he did it. He set up a plan with Jesus because he would come and be glorified in it. It was a way that God could be glorified and his mercy be shown um to everyone so it, the angels are really fascinated by uh the process of salvation through jesus for human beings uh but angels can't be redeemed uh all spiritual beings that surround god and his kingdom they are not all called angels they're called other things there's the ofana as well those weird creatures that have wheels with eyes all over them on the bottom of the thrones of god god's throne there's uh, these wheels on the ends of his throne. And if you look back to ancient Middle Eastern uh, glyphs of kings, you'll see these things. Um, so all kinds of creatures that are uh, spiritual creatures, um, but we're the ones adopted in. So that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, angelology is a subject that's really quite interesting if you've never studied that. But uh, Okay, Brother Jordan, what would you say about this? Yeah, I really like what Renee said about angels don't get to share in that redemption, because obviously we know that uh, Satan and his little minions are not going to be saved. Um, and I think another thing that sets us apart in terms of that capability of being redeemed is humans are going to have a distinct, what am I trying to say here? They're going to have a very unique opportunity to share in the exaltation of Jesus Christ, which is something that we don't see that angels as having. Um, I'm just looking at 1 Corinthians because there's a verse I want to bring up here in a minute. But uh, Renee also brought up the fact that we have different bodies. So we have to think about biologically, what can we do that angels cannot, you know, we can do things like bear children. So I think those are important things to remember when we talk about being made in the image of god i don't think we'll fully understand what that ever means but you know i i personally believe this is why we have issues with low self-esteem we have people who are bullied people who get attacked online all these things because if we hate if we can look in the mirror and hate what we see we're learning to hate the image of god so if you're not embracing the idea that you are fearfully and wonderfully made every day, you are letting the hatred for the image of God manifest itself every time you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I don't like that about myself or, oh, that could be better. You know, God made you for a purpose. So if we want to say things like salvation are true, you also have to admit it's true that you are fearfully, wonderfully made just as you are and you should you need to realize that you are just as beautiful to God as we view, you know, something like the Niagara Falls. So I digress a little bit with that back to the angels. Um, not only do we have the ability to share in his exaltation, but humans also, they have the ability to conform to Christ through sanctification. I feel that's something that's um, somewhat separate as well that we can do that angels cannot um go into that verse though in first corinthians since we're spending so much time there today there's a verse in chapter six verse three that says know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things are pertaining in this life so we can see here that we in some way are also going to be 
uh, judge of the angels. So I just think overall, that's what I would say makes us different. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. I was, I kept thinking about what I was trying to say. Um, when we're talking about being in the image of God, this was my original point before I digress. Um, we know God is a triune being. In a sense, we have three parts of us as well. We have a flesh. We have a soul. We have a spirit. So I think that's in one way we are made in the image of God. So I know that was kind of all over the place. Hope you guys kept up. <laughs> <laughs> No, it wasn't. That was quite clear, I think. Very well, very well said. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I've often said that uh, when it says we're made in the image of God, uh, uh, that um, the Bible says, first of all, that uh, let us make man in our image. That's uh, an early indication in the Bible that, that God is somehow plural. We, it, it, on one hand, the Bible tells us that there's, uh, there's in Judaism and in Christianity, it's monotheism. There's one God. We believe that. Um, on the other hand, it says, let us. As a matter of fact, the first word in the Bible, I mean, the first verse in the Bible, it, it, it said, uh, in the beginning, God, well, the, the word there is Elohim, and that's a plural form of the word. So these are uh, indications that something and even the the, the jews uh, back before christ's time they understood that that somehow there was a plurality now we know that it's a triunity now that god is three and yet one and i i think we all are trinitarian here if you're not you can tell us it's all right but we think for the most part we're all trinitarian uh and, and in that same respect, if we're made in God's image and God is triune, three persons, three distinct persons, yet one God, we how are, how could we be like that? Well, we're I'm one person, and yet Luke's body, Luke's soul, Luke's spirit, uh, and yet one Luke. And um, but angels, uh, by the way. Uh, there's verses in the Bible that talk about uh, the angels being called. Uh, the sons of God. And uh, people, I, I've heard it taught that uh, the, a, a son is a direct creation from God. In other words, an angel was, came cre directly from God. I didn't. I'm a result of what we call procreation, not direct creation. Procreation is that that the direct creation of from god was adam and then eve in a sense came out of adam but but really adam was the direct creation he was son of god uh, and the angels are a direct creation they are sons of god uh, we're procreations so we're different in that respect but thank you jesus with the new birth uh I am a son of God, a direct creation, because now I'm a new creation, directly created by God, regenerated with a living uh, spirit connected to the spirit of God. Um, so in those ways, uh, where these are some distinctions, but when you study what angels are in the Bible, it's really, really interesting because most people through art and, and history, uh, angels have been portrayed uh, as either a man or a little infant, sometimes as a woman with wings, with two wings. And really, there's nothing in the Bible to support that. Uh, we, we do have pretty clear descriptions of what the Bible calls cherubim and seraphim. Uh, these are two classes of kind of what I guess we could classify them as angelic beings, types of angels. Um, but uh, the angels that we see appearing in the Bible, like Gabriel, uh, and, and then uh, the, the angels that appeared with the Lord uh, in, uh, to Abraham before they went to Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, they uh, appeared in the form of men. Um, but really, the, and they didn't have wings. Uh, 
they looked like men. As far as everybody could tell, they were men. Uh, but um, angels, uh, I, I, it's hard for us. I, I don't really know if we can really say what an angel is, except for the descriptions for the cherubim and the seraphim. But another thing that we have to keep in mind is a lot of times when we see the word angel in the Bible, it's not talking about an angel at all, one of these direct creations of God that we've I've been mentioning. Uh, an angel, in many cases, simply means a messenger. That's what the word means. And that's why, uh, as an evangelist, we are evangelists. I hope everybody in the congregation is an evangelist. If you notice, the root word of evangelist is angel right in the middle. And that means I'm a messenger. The prefix ev means good, good messenger. I have a good message. And ist means that one who delivers the good message. So an evangelist is one who's delivering the good news, uh, the gospel. Uh, but could you say I'm an angel? Well, not in the sense that people are thinking what angels are, but I'm an angel in the, in the, in the definition of an angel means messenger. So anybody God uses to give a message is uh, an angel in that respect. There's another term called the angel of the Lord. And when you see the angel of the Lord, uh, most people think that's a creation of God. But I believe that the term angel of the Lord uh, either always or mostly refers to Jesus himself in the uh, an incarnation of Jesus, what's called a Christophany. God, either the Father or Christ, appeared and walked among men from time to time. We know he walked among Adam, in the garden with Adam and Eve. And we know that uh, there's other cases like, again, with um, uh, Abraham. Three appeared to Abraham, uh, two angels, and another one. And most people, theologians, conclude that that third one was a Christophany, or a Theophany at least. Theophany means God, not, not Christ, but God the Father made an appearance in the form of a man to interact with his creation. Uh, if it was Christ himself, then they call it a Christophany. So this is, there's a lot that's really fascinating about this subject, and uh, that's a little bit that I know about it. Okay, uh, Renee or Jordan, any more you want to add to this? Yeah, I wanted to add one thing. Uh, yes, uh, one great important distinction is that God's spirit himself dwells within us. Uh, not in all humans, but in believers. That is a, a great distinction uh, as well. But I also want to say, if you, we're just going to use our angel for simplicity purpose, because most people, the angelic beings or spiritual beings, uh, like the seraphim and the cherubim and Afana, they are horrifying. And even the ones uh, that look like men scare people. They, they want to fall down as dead or worship them because of the glory on them from being in the presence of God. So uh, just like Moses, when he had to cover his face with a veil because he was shining from uh, being in God's presence so long. Uh, they are horrifying if you research them. Uh, some of the cherubim, there, I, there's many uh, types of them, but the ones we see uh, in, I think it's Ezekiel, uh, have four faces uh, of an ox, an eagle, a lion, and a man. And they have feet like a calf, and they have six wings, and it's and they have eyes all on their wings, their eyeballs. They can see in every direction, and they don't turn their head when they move because they got like little stick feet like cows, and they move forward, backward, side to side, and don't turn their head because they can see because they got four faces, and it's horrifying. But I, I love the cherubim, especially in Ezekiel, because every face represents one of the four gospels and one attribute of jesus the lion he's the lion of the tribe of judah right um he is that's the king right uh and then you have uh the ox which is the suffering servant um and you have the eagle i forgot what that that's the divinity of jesus the eagle and then you have man he is the son of man uh, the second adam and then you can line that up with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John is obviously the eagle. He represents the divinity of Christ. It is a fascinating study. 
if you get a chance, go to my channel. Uh, and I don't even remember what it, what it is. Maybe the, uh, cherubim or the four faces of the cherubim and the four gospels or something. I don't even remember T old Testament shadows. You might be able to find it. It's pretty old, but it is a fascinating study, but these creatures are unbelievably terrifying. They really are. And you see even the ones that don't look that severe, that look like men cause people to drop as dead. Uh, you know, so it's a fascinating study if you do it. All right. Another th thought came to my mind. I posted this verse here. Uh, he was 13 too. Uh, be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. That's always been something to keep us on our toes. <laughs> think about it sometimes you encounter a person and uh, how do you deal with that person and uh, well you're actually unaware that it's really an angel 